Testing, mic check. Oh, that's, that's me. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, I thought since, since I'm in New Zealand, I, I really must make more Tolkien references. Um, but the, the idea really is that this is the, the, the only data structure you need. Um, so what, it, what, what is it? It's, it's an automatically resizing array of pointers. Um, and you don't need to know anything about the implementation of it because I'm going to change it. Um, <laughs> Hopefully for the better. Um, so this, its important traits is that it's, it's an array of pointers. It's indexed by an unsigned long. Some people have been asking for a U64 index. They're not getting it yet. They might in the future. Um, it starts out with all pointers in it, it are null, and it occupies uh, uh, no. It allocates no memory to begin with. It has a spin lock embedded in it, so you don't need to worry about locking. It's taking care of its own locking, uh, at least if you're using the, 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 uh, the regular API, which is all I'm going to be talking about today. There is an advanced API where you get to take care of the locking for it. Uh, I've, I've touched on that in other talks. Um, if you go look at the plum Linux Plumbers uh, talk from uh, November in, in Vancouver, uh, you can find out more about that. Um, I don't want to talk about that today. The other important performance aspect of this is that loads are store-free. So if, if you're doing a load, you do not take the spin lock, the, uh, the, 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 the RCU, uh, thanks to Paul McKenney, is, uh, technique is used in order to avoid um, doing any modifications. So a simultaneous modification can be happening to the array, and you will get atomically either the, uh, the pointer that was in there, or the pointer that was just stored in there, but you won't get a, a mixture of the two, and you won't get you, you won't get something that was never stored at that uh, at, at, at that index. So the uh, mo most users only need to use these three, or maybe even four um, functions. You know, you you, you load, you store. Uh, may, may, maybe you erase rather than storing a null. Some people prefer that. Um, and you can iterate over it because um, you know, counting from zero to infinity takes quite a long time. Uh, so we, we, we have XA for each, which will, call, which will execute the loop once for each non-null um, entry in the X-Array. Uh, we have this functionality called marking. The, 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 these are search keys. You get three, uh, three marks per entry. Um, so you can say, you know, all, all, I, I want to iterate over only the ones which have mark zero set, or only the ones that have mark two set. And mo most of the users will define their own meanings for mark zero, mark one, and mark two, so that they can say, I want to iterate only over only the ones which are not yet written, or I want to iterate only the ones which are currently being written, that, that, that kind of thing. Um, so, the, the, these are somewhat less used parts of the API than load and store. So we have an insert. An insert will only uh, store if there was nothing already in the array. Um, compare and exchange. So if, if you only want to, if, if you want to be certain that uh, nobody else was racing with you, um, you can use a compare and exchange operation. Uh, find um, will search through the array in order to find the, the next um, one which matches the uh, the, the, the filter. Um, and reserve is a shocking part of the, <laughs> uh, it's, it's an awful part of the uh, API, really. But what it does is, if, if your locking is so complicated that you would otherwise have to uh, really mess around with, 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 with the locking, um, before you take any lock at all, you can, um, you, you can say, reserve this um, index, and then you can do a store later without allocating memory. Speaking of allocations, you can also um, ask the, for, for, for a store operation, you say, here is the pointer which I want to put at this index. With an allocation, you say, here is a pointer. Please find me a null entry to put it at. Um, and it tells you where it put it. Um, with an allocating X-ray, um, I, 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 I said earlier that uh, storing null is the same thing as doing an array. That's not true anymore with an allocating array because um, it is very convenient to be able to, um, to, to store null. Um, we actually have users which depend on this, which, which depend on being on, they distinguish between storing a null 
and keeping the we, storing null keeps the uh, entry allocated. So somebody else calling XA alloc will not um, be able to allocate that one. It, it, it remains reserved. Uh, just as if you use the XA reserve um, API I mentioned on the previous slide. But so XA arrays will both set that pointer to null and make it available for reallocation. And that's what most people want anyway, so it, it, it works well for the, uh, for the users that we have. Now, um, the, the X-Ray was developed as a replacement for the Radix tree. And uh, so I have converted all of the existing, X uh, all of the existing Radix tree users uh, to this new API, and it's all in that Git tree there. I have not yet um, submitted a pull request. In fact, I never intend to submit a pull request <laughs> for this uh, Git branch. Um, I'm, I'm going to submit the uh, conversions to the maintainers and get them to look it over because with uh, something around 50 users of the Radix tree API, I've probably made a mistake or two. Um, so I want the maintainers to be responsible <laughs> for, for, uh, for checking, <laughs> checking my work. <laughs> Um, we, we have another data structure in the kernel, the IDR, which is where the uh, whole allocation API comes from. Um, and I've, I've converted mo most of, we, we have rather more used, we have something like, something like 200 users of the IDR, I haven't converted all of them yet, but I've converted a large enough sample of the IDR users that I'm convinced the current API is, is good enough for them. Um, so, the other, the, an, another great thing you can already, you can use it for today, and you should use it for today, is um, replacing custom implementations of resizing arrays. Um, so, a, a fairly common thing we have, a fairly common pattern you see in device drivers is people inventing their own resizing arrays. Um, I, I just submitted a patch for the um, AIO code, which has its own, you know, you, you, you start out with one context, and if you allocate a second context, it doubles in size, and then when you allocate a third context, it doubles in size to four, and then it doubles again to eight. And really, it's, it's, it's just a resizing array of pointers, and that's exactly what the X-Array is. Um, you can also replace some linked lists, which is kind of fun, and I touched on that a little bit more in the, uh, the Plumbers talk, and I don't want to talk about it now because I want to get to the, the meat of this, uh, uh, this presentation. So here, here, here's, here's the interesting things. Here, here is the ways in which it is not yet the uh, one data structure to, to rule them all. Um, if you try to use it for arrays with um, uh, what I call sparse arrays, so arrays with very sparse indices, it will not work well. If you try and replace a hash table, again, it's, it's like having a, a, a very sparse array. It, it won't work well. Um, we have an API, in, which I didn't even put on the slides because I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed of it, uh, to support um, storing uh, uh, a single pointer across a range of indices. So if you look up any um, index between A and B, it will return you the same pointer. Um, it, this, this, <laughs> the implementation um, is not good, and the, uh, the API itself is not good either, so I, I need to do another round of, um, uh, of, of, of refinement on that before we add more users. We have a number of users in the kernel of red-black red trees. Um, don't, don't try and... Um, you use the, uh, the X-Array instead of an RB tree yet, unless you're very certain that it will work well. And the file descriptor table for reasons that I will hopefully have time to get into later. Okay, so why not? What, what, what goes wrong if you try and, and use, uh, if, if, if somebody else is choosing your array indices for you in order to cause maximum damage? Um, the, the, the Radix tree data structure that the X-Array currently uses as its back end um, really does not handle it well. Um, here's, here's an example of storing a pointer at an index which is its own address. 
which is actually a fairly sensible thing to want to do. If, if you just want to say, if, if you just want a list of all pointers, then instead of, um, instead of trying to invent somewhere to store it, you just store it at its own address, and then you can iterate over all of them and you've got your list of pointers. Except that the radix tree really loses its mind when you try and do that, because the index is implied by the position of the pointer in the tree. And so in order to store it at this FFFFFFFFF, it has to allocate nodes all the way down to the bottom and then store the pointer in one place. And so you, you, you have this incredibly <clears throat> deep tree and it's got one pointer in it and you've allocated about, three, about 12 kilobytes of memory in order to store a single pointer. Um, and the process of looking it up, well, six bits at a time, <laughs> you, 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 you get to the index that you stored it at. This is, this is not good. This, 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 this is quite the drawback. Um, and as I alluded to earlier, some people um, receive the index they uh, are, are storing the pointer at from another machine. Now, may, maybe that machine has a different endianness and, and it's, it's not actually m malicious, it's not trying to harm you, but nevertheless, it's, it's giving you an address, uh, it's giving you an, an index which doesn't work well uh, for your machine's endianness. Um, and the, the, there's a few examples of that uh, scattered throughout network file systems, network protocols, anything where somebody else is, give, is giving you an index that you're going to want to look at. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy at this point with the X-Ray API, um, but so, so, so it's time to look at what, what, what we do about the back end. As I said, we already have um, a red black tree in the kernel. Um, red black trees are not very cache efficient. You, um, if, 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 if you have at each level of a red black tree, you make a choice, left or right. Um, so if you've got a thousand entries in your red black tree, your red black tree is 10 levels deep. Um, so it's not very cache efficient because every time you walk through it, you, 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 you basically take a cache miss. It's like having a W, it's like using a doubly linked list um, sometimes in order to annoy computer theorists, people like call it a trebly linked list because at, at each node you're, you're linking up to your parent and left and right. So, um, also the interface to the red black tree is really hard to use. Um, and you know, if, if we use this as backend for the X-ray, you know, maybe it wouldn't be so hard to use, but right now um, to convert something from using the, uh, the radix tree to using the red black tree would involve writing a lot of code because for each, um, for each type of um, data you store in it, um, you, have to <clears throat> you, you have to write your own search and insert functions. Um, and in particular, we, we, we saw a struct page in, the, um, in, in, in a radix tree like, all over the place. And the last thing you want to be doing is talking to, to people about growing struct page. Um, that, that, that's not a popular thing to suggest. Um, oh, and the red black tree isn't RCU safe, so you have to take some kind of lock every time you walk the tree. Um, one, of the base, one of the advantages of the radix tree is it's RCU safe. Um, very, very important for the page cache. You, you really don't want to use uh, the page cache on a modern machine without RC, RCU. So the red black tree was out. Um, so now we look to the B tree. We have a B tree implementation inside the kernel. It's not as efficient um, for densely packed indices as the radix tree is. It's about half as efficient, in fact, because for each um, for, for, for each entry, you are not only storing the pointer, you're also storing the index at which that pointer sits. Um, so that's that, 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 that's not great. Um, it doesn't support ranges, and the whole point behind me starting to do the X-ray work and the other work I've been doing with the page cache 
is that we want to support huge pages in the page cache. And so what, what you want for huge pages in the page cache is you want to say anything between um, indexes 512 and 1023 gets the same pointer. Um, and the B tree doesn't support that. Um, and the implementation inside the kernel doesn't, isn't RCU safe. So I, I, I rapidly discarded using the B tree code we already have. So a colleague and I, um, Liam, uh, Liam and I came up with something we're calling the maple tree. Now it is, um, and the reason it's called the maple tree is because we're both Canadian, we're very patriotic people. Um, so the maple tree is an adaptive tree. Um, so we have several different types of node. Um, a, a range node, you, you'd start, probably start at the top of the tree looking at a range node. And in the range node, you would have eight pointers and you'd have seven pivots. And so you, you scan through the tiny, the, the, the seven entry array of pivots looking to see where you sit, uh, where, 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 where the index you're looking for is going to fall. And then you follow the corresponding pointer. And you're thinking, hang on, you've got seven pivots and eight pointers. How does that work? We well, start out with a, an implicit minimum and maximum for each node. Um, so you, you, you really have nine indices that you're looking at and eight pointers that fall between them. But you don't need to store the min and the max because either they were stored in the parent or they're implicitly zero and u long max because you're looking at the, the head of the, uh, of the tree. Now, having only eight pointers per level of the tree doesn't sound like the most efficient uh, way to look at it. Um, so when you get down to the, um, when, you, when, when, you, when you get down to the leaf node, you can just store 15 pointers in it. It's, it's, if, 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 if you're looking at something like um, the, the allocating array, where you start off with, um, you know, I'm going to store the first one at zero and the second one at one, and then keep going two, three, four, five. Um, you only need to allocate dense nodes at, at, at the leaf, and uh, it's it is actually more efficient sometimes <laughs> than using the radix tree was, um, simply because we have smaller nodes. Um, but there's less wasted space per node. The, 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 the important part about Linux memory management is that it's, it's based on pages. I mean, yes, we're using the slab allocator, uh, but the slab allocator splits up pages. So the question is, how many uh, nodes can you allocate per page? And with the, um, with the radix tree, you get seven nodes per page. Um, I'm talking about 64-bit systems here. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different calculation on 32-bit systems, but for the sake of uh, keeping this brief, I'm just gonna talk about 64-bit systems. Um, you get, you <clears throat> so with, 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 with the radix tree, you get 64 entries at each level of the tree. And you multiply it up, 64 times eight, and then you have to add on an extra 64 bytes because there's some extra metadata associated with uh, each level of the tree, including things like a parent pointer and knowing uh, what the shift is and all, all that kind of thing. Um, and we can cut most of that out for the maple tree. Um, and we end up with the, the calculation I've done on the screen. If, 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 if you're just using, um, if, if, if you're just using dense nodes, you can get 448 entries per page with the radix tree and 480 per page with the, uh, with the maple tree. So that's good. I mean, that's, that's like a 10% improvement. That's not, 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 the, not, uh, not inconsiderable. Um, but you end up having to spend more nodes managing your other nodes. So you, 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 you lose that 10% uh, advantage fairly rapidly. But it's, it's comparable. And uh, the nice thing, with the pathological example I showed you earlier, storing uh, ext2fs type at its own address, well, that, that just fits in one node because you, you say, okay, well, um, you know, all, all, all of the indices up to here 
so all of the entries up to this index zero, this one has, is a pointer to the XUFS type, and everything after it is also null. And so all that information fits into a single node. That's pretty good. Um, now, making this RCU safe is tricky. Um, I'm really glad that Liam and I are working on this together because it turns out that reasoning about um, when you can reuse, when you, when you can use and reuse parts of the node is very, very tricky. We, we had some very complicated code that we ended up having to throw away <laughs> after having written it um, because we had not taken into account that two threads might move at different speeds. So we were looking at doing inserts and um, of course one thread might take an interrupt while another thread continues to execute at full speed and we managed to come up with scenarios where a, an, a, a thread protected by RCU could end up seeing uh, data which was never stored at a particular index. And, 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 that, and that's just unforgivable, right? You, you can either see the earlier state of the, uh, the, the value at that index or the, the subsequent state. You may not see something which never existed. You can't have a pointer which was never stored at that index. That, that's just not allowed. So we didn't have to throw, the, throw all that code away. Um, and we, we end up just having to allocate and copy a lot of nodes. And this is what has driven us to keep the nodes so small. The uh, computer theoreticians will tell you the larger branching factor you have at each level, the more efficient your tree is. And they are absolutely <sighs> right. But if you're having to copy a kilobyte every time you, you, you do an insert that isn't, that isn't an append operation, like it isn't into um, blank space at the end. If, you, if you're doing an insert into the middle, it's, um, it, it, it'll, it'll kill you. Um, so we, we've, kept, we've kept the nodes very small at just 128 bytes. Now, in contrast to the B tree literature, which tells you that you should um, keep your nodes balanced at all times. Um, we say, no, we are going to keep, we, 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 we do not feel the need to balance our nodes at all times. Under two circumstances. Um, one is that when the indices are so dense, there's no advantage to balancing. So take the example of um, filling up from zero. You, 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 you allocate your first 15 in a dense node, and then you allocate number 16 into a new dense node, and you have a node above it, which shows that, which, 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 which says 0 to 15 over here, and number 16 down there. That's an unbalanced tree. Right. A, a, a balanced tree would have, you know, naught to eight over here and nine to sixteen down there. Well, why, 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 why would you do that? Why, why would you choose to balance your tree to satisfy the, the theoretical, uh, um, the theoretical basis behind the the the, the, the B tree? Um, when there's actually no advantage to it. In fact, there are disadvantages to it because now when you come to the end of uh, the, the, the 9 to uh, 9 plus 15, um, 24, when you've, when you've done number 24, no, now you've got to go back and rebalance into the earlier node or you've got to grow the node again. And th th this is actually um, noted as a, um, as, as a problem with the B tree um, if, you, if you read some of the papers about B trees. Um, and they, they recommend having solutions like, well, when you're, load, when you're doing the initial load of the database into the, uh, in, in, into the B tree, then um, create it unbalanced and then have one, one grand rebalancing operation at the end. 
And uh, you know, we, we, we don't do that. We don't have that luxury of being able to say, oh, this is, this, this, this is just the initialization phase. Um, so we, we, we just ignore the whole uh, balancing aspect of it. We say, okay, if it is clear that there is nowhere else to insert to the left, then just leave that alone and, and you know, start allocating to the right. Don't move nodes over from the left nodes to the right nodes uh, just to keep things balanced. Um, supporting marks in the, uh, in, in the maple tree is, is a little bit trickier. So the way that this is done with the radix tree is that each node, um, you may remember I told you earlier that each node has 64 bytes of metadata associated with it. Well, uh, 24 of those bytes are the, uh, the, the, the search markings. And uh, that, 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 that's a lot. Um, so we've, we've started looking at what, how, how we can support marks with the, uh, with the maple tree. Um, we're, we're, we're pretty committed to keeping our nodes at 128 bytes. Uh, we've got eight bytes already allocated to be the, the parent node. So it seems reasonable to start removing, um, the, to, to start decreasing the number of um, pointers available to each level of the node if you choose to support, if, if, if you choose to have search marks in your X-ray. Um, right now you get them, whether you, whether you use them or not, you just get them. They're, they're part of the, uh, the basic um, operation of the, uh, of the radix tree. But um, what, what we're going to do is, is, is force the users to say, uh, when, when they declare the, the, their, their x-ray, I'm going to use two marks, or I'm going to use five marks, or however many they want to use. And we will then simply decrease them for pointers at each level uh, until there's enough space to store the number of marks that they've requested. Uh, and this actually solves a problem for a lot of people because I've, I've had requests from ext4 um, ButterFS and XFS all wanting to have more search marks. Um, and I say, how many? And they say, well, four would be nice, five would be nice. But when, I, when, when, when you give me five, I'm definitely going to ask for six. And I said, well, how about 18 as a maximum? And they're like, yeah, that's, that'll probably do us for a while. I, I don't know how much they're going to enjoy having the, uh, the, the, the performance hit of uh, having somewhat deeper trees, but that is now their problem and not my problem. <laughs> so I'm happy about that. Um, how much over time? Oh, okay, so the, the, the last bullet here is, um, well, while we're working on this, we obviously have the existing users of the X-Array in mind. And we want to be sure that we support them well. But we also want to support some new users. And one of the current pain points we have in Linux is the uh, MMSEM. And what the MMSEM does is it, uh, it protects the VMA tree. So every time you call MMAP, you get a new VMA. And we keep those VMAs in a red-black tree. And like I was saying, there's, there's no concept using RCU to walk a red-black tree. You have to actually take this uh, MM uh, semaphore in, in read mode for every page fault. So if you have a very multi-threaded application and you're running, through it and, and all the threads are running across all your CPUs, um, they're all take, and taking lots of page faults. Uh, they are all hitting this one cache line that contains the, uh, the, 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 the semaphore, taking it in read mode, so, so it just bounces around, every CPU's making it dirty. And um, this is not the most efficient way of doing it. If we can walk the VMA tree by using RCU, then we will have a fairly large gain 
Um, but the, um, the, 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 the red-black tree has support for doing efficient allocation of uh, free space. Because when you call mmap, we have to search that DNA tree and find a hole in your address space of the right of, of a sufficient size to put in the, um, the, the, the mmap that you have asked for. And doing a linear scan <coughs> is not the, uh, uh, not, not, not really recommended. You know, if you've got a thousand DNAs, you, you don't want to go looking through all of them to try and find a gap. So what we're going to do is, um, in addition to supporting mark, search marks, also um, be able to note where, what the largest hole is at any, in, in, in any of the, uh, the, 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 the pointers. But that's going to be an optional feature. That's, that, that's not something that most users are going to want to have. Um, it's, it's entirely optional. Because again, it's going to reduce the number of branches you have at each level, which is going to lead for, to a deeper tree. It's all about trade-offs. So is this the one API to the one true data structure? To my chagrin, no. There are, there are still places where <coughs> Some users uh, want to have overlapping ranges. That, that, that's not the metaphor I've gone for with the X-ray. I have, I, I, I have presented an API to something where for each index there is one pointer. The, 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 these other users, um, if you think about things like file locks, um, uh, there's, there's some other good examples, and they've just gone right out of my head. But uh, they, 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 they want to say, OK, I, there, there are three ranges which uh, match the search key that you're looking for. Um, I, I mentioned when we're uh, doing, um, because, we, because we're RCU based, we often have to uh, allocate and, and free new nodes on an insert, and the cost of doing that may be too high for some users. So we're, we're talking about maybe having a per instance of the x-ray flag to say, you know what, I don't do lookups under RCU. So that's going to make the inserts run faster, but it's going to make searches slower because every search will have to take the spin lock. And for some users, that's the right thing to do. Some users don't want to use RCU, don't need to use RCU in order to search the array. Um, some users can't tolerate memory allocations on insert. To use the red black tree, you don't need to, to do memory allocation on every insert um, because the uh, RB node is embedded within your data structure. And so some, some of them are just not written to uh, tolerate memory allocations at that point because if you're doing a GFP atomic allocation, that can fail. I mean, it's pretty rare, but it can happen. Um, some array, the, apparently there are some people who store things other than pointers in arrays. Apparently you can have an array of things that aren't pointers. I don't know why you would do that, but so, some, <laughs> some people do. So we, we, we're also talking about maybe coming up with another API for, you know, do, do, so you can store a 16-bit int in, instead of a, a pointer. Well, that's, that it's getting ahead of ourselves, but we are considering it. And of course, um, the people who want 64-bit indices, this is generally file system people again. You know, I've, I've, I've booted this 32-bit kernel and I want to address terabytes, exabytes of storage, so I want to look at things up with 64-bit indices. I'm like, yeah, okay, I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't want to write that code yet. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. The, the, these are things which are on my wish list. So, with 10 minutes, to go, what have I glossed over that you would like me to explain better? Is there like a question right there? Cool, cool. thanks, Matt. Um, have you looked at Judy arrays? I have looked and at Judy arrays. I'm assuming that you chose not to do that, so why not? Wonderful question, thank you. Um, yeah, so I, 
bit of personal history. I was actually sat across the cube wall from Doug Baskins when he was uh, writing the uh, Judy Array at HP uh, back in, um, I guess that was 2000, 2001. Um, yeah, um, Judy Arrays are really cool. Um, they are also Radix trees, uh, but implemented in a much more clever fashion than the Radix trees that we use in the kernel today. Um, they are adaptive and they, they're really good for storing strings because each layer is actually um, eight, uses eight bits instead of the six bits that we do. So um, when, when each uh, layer is a character, uh, you, you can index your way through a string really efficiently. Um, the problem is that they don't, um, they don't compress very well. So when, so <clears throat> the Radix tree that we have will, um, the, the Radix tree we have uh, compresses itself. So if, if you only have very small indices that you're storing, you, you don't allocate very many nodes. The problem comes when you in, allocate really large nodes. Um, with the Judy array, um, at each, at each level, you, 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 you have to know, um, are, are, you, are, you, are you staying or are you going and, and, and do various comparisons. It's, it's not the, the sort of general perp, it's not the general purpose data structure that, 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 that we need, and it doesn't really have support for doing ranges in the way that we need it to have. Um, and I, I think that's the key thing. The, the key thing about the maple tree is it was designed to be uh, range-based. Um, because that, that, that was what we were missing. I mean, we, 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 we really did focus on the VMA tree as, as our prototypical user. And we actually started out compl creating a completely separate interface that was just for ranges. And it was only after we'd got a little way into development that we realized, oh, this will actually work really, really well for um, single uh, um, ranges of length one. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a huge expert on Judy. Um, I, I, there wasn't a whole lot of osmosis across that cube wall. But, um, yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a big fan of, of the Judy array um, idea. Uh, the, the implementation that Doug came up with was a little overcomplicated. Uh, the, the, Mathieu Desnoyers has written a much better implementation um, that sits in user space, actually. Um, and I've, I've, I've read it over, and I, I really like what he's done with it. But I, I think the maple tree is probably a better choice for us. But that, that was a great question. Thank you. Tobin? You said that if you know there's nothing, no space, that you don't rebalance the tree? Yeah. Does that mean if you fill up from zero and then on the first delete you have to rebalance? Uh, no. No, you, 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 you actually never rebalance in order to, uh, you, you never rebalance on a read, ever, ever, ever. Because in order to rebalance you have to allocate memory and you, you're on a read, you're probably under the RCU lock so you, 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 can't, you can't do anything. You, uh, you, you can't modify the tree if you're only holding the RCU lock. Um, you, you don't rebalance, um, you, you don't rebalance um, in order to make the tree balanced unless it is possible for, for you to improve the um, improve the, the, the width of the tree or the depth of the tree. Um, so you, 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 you might rebalance in order to be able to delete one of the nodes, but you wouldn't rebalance if the number of nodes would be the same, just distribute just have the pointers distributed slightly differently between them. So you, 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 you try and make the, 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 the left side as heavy as possible 
in order that you can just keep allocating out to the right as, as, as far as possible without doing any more rebalancing. Make sense? Okay. Question here? So when you need to split a range node, either, um, so okay, so when you need to split a range node, how do you decide whether to allocate at the same level or one level below? Okay. Um, if there is space, if there is space in that node, uh, okay, so, so, so you're saying the root, the root node is full? Range okay. Is full and that now needs to insert in there. Okay. So a, a, a range node at any point in the tree is full and you need to do an insert in there. Okay. So at that point you ascend to its parent and you split its parent. Now, where do you choose the pivot for that split? That, 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 that's the key thing, which is what I'm saying about uh, the, the denseness of the indices. If you can see that you can create um, if, if there's an advantage to be gained by splitting in the middle, we'll split in the middle. Um, but generally, we'll, we'll, we'll try and keep the left as heavy as possible without, without putting ourselves in a situation where we would need to rebalance and create a, 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 what I call a spindly tree, a, a, a tree that uh, no longer satisfies the, the basic properties of a B tree. Um, so, I mean, the basic properties of B tree is, you know, the, 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 that you're within a, a certain percentage of, of being an optimal tree. Um, but you, um, but, 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 but we, we play pretty fast and loose with that rule, <laughs> right? We, 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 we don't uh, try and, and rebalance for the sake of being balancing. Yeah. So when you are pivoting on a parent node, you might have to shift some of the uh, nodes from one uh, at the level below from yeah. left to right. Yes. Um, you so no, then how do you decide how many to shift? Yeah, um, so we, 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 we look at what the um, maximum could be, the, 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 what the maximum index could be in that left node, right? So if, if, if you've got one dense node, there is no point in um, splitting uh, in, in allocating less than 15, right? There's no point splitting that node ever. Um, you're, just, you're just wasting space. Um, so we, we would happily have a, a 0 to 15 and then a 16 to 17 in the next node. And, and, it, and it can create trees which look spindly, and, and, and then you, you go and analyze it, and you realize actually there is no way to have done this better. It, it, it could look differently. It, it, it could look less spindly, but it's actually no more efficient. At least not, not in any example I've been able to come up with. Now, I could be wrong. There could, there could be bugs, <laughs> but um, you know, we, we, we may need to change how we do things, but we'll, 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 we'll look at that. And it, it's, it's definitely better than the radix tree. <laughs> At, at this point, right? We, we haven't been able to come up with any examples where we're doing worse than the radix tree. Those example, those words that you've used to describe the efficiency and the way that you make those uh, decisions seem a little bit rubbery, I guess is the word. Have you got any tests that actually quantify those results? And is there, do, is there a test suite that actually is working on Analyzing what kind of tree comes out at the end? Yes, uh, we we have a test suite. Um, so the 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 X-ray has a, has a, has a test suite, uh, which is at this point mostly focused on um, being a regression test suite. We we have had bugs in the past, both in the the radix tree and in the X-ray rewrite that I did, um, and so the the tests are very focused on finding. On, on making sure those bugs don't reoccur, but we also have uh, the 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 you know Liam and I aren't done yet. Uh, we 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 we're, we're not. I mean, the Git tree is public, but we're not publicizing it. You know, I didn't put a link to our Git tree because we're we're not ready for people to 
uh, dive in and help at this point. We're, every, there's a lot of things which are in flux, um, but one of the things we are doing is, uh, yeah, definitely a, a, a test. Some of the tests in the test suite are going to check that the tree is not um, inefficient. Well, I think that's uh, time. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this brings us to the end of the LCA 2019 Kernel Miniconf. Uh, please thank all of our speakers, um, as well as all of our wonderful volunteers on the AV team and the uh, room monitors who have been helping us uh, put this day together. Um, and thank you all for coming. Enjoy the rest of the conference.